GameRanks presents 10 facts about Red Dead Redemption that you probably didn't know. It's everybody's favorite Western game, and yeah, we're still talking about it, so we might as well get started off with number 10. Here's a fun little voiceover fact for you. Josh Blaylock, who played Brian D. from Rocket Jump's video game high school, actually did the voice of Jack Marston, John Marston's son in Red Dead. That's just cool because Video Game High School is a cool little YouTube series, and he also made an appearance in No Country for Old Men. So he's no Willem Dafoe in Beyond Two Souls, but he's the next best thing, I guess. And at number nine, since we're talking about voice actors, let's talk about the voice actor who portrayed John Marston. The man who did the voice and motion capture for him is Rob Whitehoff. And he basically is John Marston in real life. He's not even really masking his voice or acting up anything, it's just how he sounds. Polygon had a really great video documentary on him called Human Angle, Finding John Marston. And the reason it's so interesting is that because after Red Dead Redemption, Rob Whitehoff kind of just walked away from the video game industry. He probably could have gotten a ton of cool acting jobs and become the next Troy Baker, but instead he decided to go back to the Midwest, return to working his normal job and taking care of his family. And uh, to me, honestly, that's kind of like taking the cowboy way out. That's pretty cool. It's just really awesome and perfect how this guy embodies the character. Even just watching a few minutes of this documentary and getting to know how this guy speaks and lives, you can really tell that John Marston is a part of his soul. And I kind of like the fact that he's one and done. That special performance, that special voice, and that special portrayal is unique to Red Dead Redemption and nothing else. No other video game will have anything like John Marston, and that's what makes it really special. And at number eight, here's an interesting one. Rockstar Games was actually told that making Red Dead Redemption would result in financial failure. In an interview with video gamer Rockstar Vice President Dan Hauser was talking about how the company was told that producing a big budget Western video game would be a complete disaster. It's funny that at that point, anybody from any company or bank or organization would tell Rockstar that what they were doing was a disaster because their track record was so good by then. And it turned out to be a sure bet because Red Dead Redemption shipped like five million games within just like a few weeks of release, smashing records and definitely setting their own records for western style video games. So Rockstar kind of went from being the underdog and being told that they shouldn't do it to having basically the only western game out there that's still kicking ass today. And I mean sure there's that game Gun but does anyone really talk about that anymore? Well I do but that's just me. And at number seven, here's a fun little tidbit. In the Undead Nightmare DLC, you know, the one with all the zombies and stuff, there's a trophy or like an achievement called Six Years in the Making. The description for getting this achievement is to find and kill a Sasquatch. Now what I think makes this achievement really special is the reference to Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I don't know about you guys, but there's been a myth forever about San Andreas, about a Bigfoot existing in the game somewhere in the mountains. My friends and I loved playing the game and going out at night in the woods and creeping around with a sniper rifle trying to find a Sasquatch. We never did, but we hunted forums and message boards and the very ins and outs of the game to try and find it. Is there a Sasquatch in San Andreas? I, I really, I guess not. I don't think so. But the fact that there is one in Undead Nightmare DLC is a very cool nod by Rockstar. I really feel like they did that for me. And at number six, let's talk about Red Dead Revolver. This is the predecessor to Red Dead Redemption, the first game, if you will. And I think it's actually really freaking awesome and underrated and completely different, by the way. But originally, this game had a tumultuous development cycle and was originally being developed by Capcom. Capcom, though, had some wacky ideas for this game. Like, apparently, it was going to be way more arcadey and over the top. And there was even going to be a lot more supernatural elements and apparently a character that could fly. Thankfully, when Rockstar finally published the game, it didn't really turn out that way. There are still remnants of some weird quirkiness and some light supernatural stuff. But ultimately, we just got a really cool Western style fun third-person arcade shooter. Poor Capcom tried to get that game out forever and they just couldn't do it. Thankfully, Rockstar was the right people to take the reins because we wouldn't have gotten Red Dead Redemption, which I'll admit is a completely different style of video game. And at number five, Red Dead Redemption had a lot of influences, including tons of callbacks to classic films and old school spaghetti westerns. One of the coolest ways you can pick up on this is that you can actually hear that infamous Wilhelm scream in the game multiple times. The Wilhelm scream, for those of you that don't know, is a famous old sound effect of a man screaming. It's iconic, you'll always be able to hear it and notice it. Star Wars uses it all the time and even put it in Battlefront. There's a ton of other film references in the game calling back to old movies like The Man Who Knew Too Much, A Fistful of Dollars, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, a mission that resembles the plot of 1992's Unforgiven, and even an area of the map called Plainview that has oil wells that represents There Will Be Blood. Rockstar Games is always full of nods and references to their influences, and Red Dead Redemption is definitely no slouch. 
And at number four, did you know that Anthony Cumia from the Opie and Anthony show actually makes a cameo appearance in the game? It's a very small role, but he plays the gunsmith. Anthony Cumia is apparently a big fan of Rockstar Games, and Rockstar Games has always been a fan of putting celebrities in their games, and even having important radio personalities. So it makes sense that he makes some sort of little appearance in this game. Sure, it's probably not the best looking representation of him, but he is confirmed by Rockstar to be in the game. At number three, here's a weird fact. South Korea apparently got the short end of the stick with Red Dead Redemption and a few other games. The South Korean version of Red Dead Redemption is not actually dubbed or translated, but it does come with a full guide to read that actually translates the whole game's script. So if you're South Korean and you don't know English or anything, you can't totally follow along in the game, you're gonna have to pause it and dig up the Red Dead Redemption script to really follow along the adventures of John Marston. I guess if anything, that just makes South Korea gamers really dedicated. South Korean gamers had to do this for a handful of games including Metal Gear Solid 4 which is quite an undertaking. That being said though I'm really glad that they packaged in a translated script because the story of Red Dead Redemption is totally worth experiencing wherever you live in whatever language you speak. And at number two, let's talk about some of the weirder aspects of Red Dead Redemption. Most importantly, the spooky ones. Rockstar Games is famous for always having weird, creepy ghost stories and just odd happenings in their game, and Red Dead Redemption is no stranger to this type of thing. One of the coolest stories out there was described and written by Jason Johnson over at Kill Screen. He went in depth and described his exploration of the town Tumbleweed to try and find some odd occurrences. Right before he was ready to give up trying to find something, he described some really creepy happenings. I did hear voices after after a few minutes. I ran through the halls looking for ghosts, but the room was empty. In the upstairs bedroom, my character started freaking out, pointing a shotgun at thin air and screaming, I'll kill you. I couldn't see anything as I was still facing the door, but I heard a voice right there. So I decided to try and shoot through the door and a body fell dead on the floor. I turned around and looted it just to make sure it had really happened. At some point, a cluster of bats erupted from a hole in the ceiling. There in the blackness, I saw a pale figure standing, which was barely visible, but clearly staring at me. I killed it too. I moved forward into an unknown corridor of the house where two ghostly men, each dressed in gentleman's attire, waited. One of them said something to the extent of, you're going to die, and sure enough, I did. They started firing and I was too weirded out to do anything about it. My silhouetted corpse collapsed in a black lump. All right, now I will say that is a really, really odd occurrence and weird, creepy things happen like that in open world games. And this is just such an odd story and occurrence, like maybe it was designed to only happen at a specific time, place, and point that had to be triggered. That being said, like, is this guy full of shit? Do you guys think he is? It's a really cool story, but it's almost borderline unbelievable. I'm curious to see what you guys think though. Let us know in the comments. And at number one, since we're talking about the spookier and creepier aspects of Red Dead Redemption, let's talk about the general town of Tumbleweed. This ghost town does have a lot of reported and proven examples of, like, actual video game hauntedness. There's a whole Wikipedia dedicated to it, and there's a bunch of really cool examples. Including, at unknown random times of the day, footprints actually appear on the stairs to the cellar in the mansion. Also, on the first floor of the saloon, a lantern in the corner is just ghostly floating around. Also, if you're in the cellar, sometimes you can hear a faint ghostly voice say, how do you do? Look it up, I'm serious. Also, in the white bunker house, if you're playing on the open world multiplayer server at night, you can actually see a white ghostly figure in the top window. If you journey over to the bunker house and go upstairs and go inside, there's no ghostly figure there. All that's there is just another creepy floating lamp. So Red Dead Redemption is definitely full of some spooky shit, and I love it. So guys, those are 10 things you may not have known about Red Dead Redemption, everybody's favorite Western game. I really, really want a sequel to this game. I know all you guys do too, so that's why we're making a video about it. Let us know anything you want about Red Dead Redemption or even Red Dead Revolver down in the comments. Do you have any really weird or cool or unexplainable moments or any other trivia factoids you wanna share with us? Definitely let us know, let's talk down in the comments. If you did have a good time, clicking the like button helps us out so much. And if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.